Hello and welcome to the Exotic Pet Collective, where we talk about tarantulas, scorpions, and all pets exotic. I'm your host, Richard, and you may know me from my YouTube channel, The Tarantula Collective. And today we have a special guest that's agreed to sit down and talk to me about uh, their journey keeping exotic pets. Now, this week's episode is brought to you by TarantulaCollective.com. You can find care sheets, merchandise, uh, discount codes, list of breeders, all those things. Uh, just check out the TarantulaCollective.com. Stay connected and up to date with everything that's going on in the collective and sign up for the mailing list if you want to get first access to new content. Couple makes custom designed terrariums, cages, and enclosures for tarantulas and inverts. And you've seen their enclosures showcased on YouTube videos by the Tarantula Collective, Tarantula Haven, Tarantula Cat, and Aquarimax Pets YouTube channels. So please welcome to the podcast Mo and Alina from Tarantula Cribs. Hey there. Hi. Thanks for having us on Thank today. Thank you. I appreciate you all coming. Thanks very much. Uh, I have been a, a huge fan of your enclosures. You sent me some, uh, man, it was a few months back now. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious, yeah. like, how, how did you all get into um, making enclosures? Yeah. So um, what happened was my wife, Alina, here actually started her own business after she bought a laser cutter. And I saw that she was making all kinds of cool things, decorations for weddings and, and all that. And she was using acrylic. and it just so happened this was right around the time of the pandemic and it was right around the time I, I bought a couple new tarantulas and I needed some enclosures but everything was closed and I saw that she was cutting acrylic and I put two and two together and thought maybe she can help me out with building a, an enclosure so she was cutting acrylic she cut the squares out and we kind of had to figure out how to glue it together and it was quite a process but it all started based out of that it was kind of a, a fluke and Actually, Alina built the first one, and it, it took a it took a while. If you can yeah. remember that, what was that like? Yeah, it took a while to figure out which glue would work best, which glue kept the edges sealed properly so that it wouldn't leak out. Then we had to figure out the size of the ventilation holes so that they weren't too big or that they weren't too small. Yeah, actually, the first enclosure we built was actually she built was uh, for a pumpkin patch and. It was, it was, I think it was like four by three by four, something, something like that. And, and we kind of engraved on there, pumpkin patch, tarantula and, and all that. And we actually still use it today. Um, it was, it was quite a process though. As she was talking about the, the gluing was probably one of the most difficult parts because regular super glue just doesn't work. So we had to figure out how to kind of weld the two pieces of acrylic together and so once we figured yeah. that out, it it became a lot faster. But it was all it was all just because the pandemic, nothing was available. Normally, you can just go to the, uh, the container store, which we have one here in St. Louis, but it was closed down for quite a while, and so there was just not too much available. And and I'm all for using like Tupperware and all that, but I wanted something sure. clear, especially for our train to like the pumpkin patch that has all these nice colors, and you wanted to see it and take pictures of it. And so that's kind of where we wanted to go with the acrylic. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've used a lot of different things for enclosures. And, you know, I got to say, and it's not just because you guys are on the podcast, but the, the, the enclosures you all make are, are some of my favorite. It probably definitely my favorite that I have down here. I've got some of my, I'm looking at them right now, some of my, uh, the, my favorite species hanging out in there. Um, and so far they've been working really well. They're nice, they're clear, they're sturdy. And that's one thing I liked about them. Um, like, yeah, AMAC boxes are readily available and are inexpensive, but they're also very flimsy and they cloud really easy. And, you know, I've just, I've just had a lot of issues with, uh, especially with the, the lids, like they'll be nice and tight when I buy them. But after a few months of use, they really start getting loose, like almost to the point of tarantula could just push them right off. And your old right. enclosures have those, uh, the locking lids you, you got, you're using magnets to lock those, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, what happened there? The very the pumpkin patch one I was talking about, that one actually we just had a 
I just taped the lid shut, to be honest. And it, we kind of went from there. And then we kind of evolved and said, we got to figure something else out. And then we could, we could glue a hinge on there and put a lock, but I just didn't like the looks of that. And so the next thing I thought of was maybe trying a magnet. And that was kind of process, kind of a process in itself because the magnet doesn't really glue on to acrylic very well. And so you have to figure out a way to uh, make it adhere. And we did have a, a few enclosures that the magnets, I think, popped off. And even after we were first selling on Etsy, I think we had one or two people come back to us and tell us that the magnets came off. And so we replaced those and, you know, we just had to figure out a better way to do it. And so what I ended up doing was, while acrylic doesn't bind to magnets very well, acrylic and does bind to acrylic. And so we okay. um, kind of put the magnet inside of an acrylic case. And so um, that way the magnet is not physically adhered to the acrylic, but it's kind of encased in it. And so as you see in your enclosures, that's kind of what the next step was. But then that's pretty time consuming to make those little <laughs> acrylic places. So yeah, that's um, I can imagine. Yeah. Making the little squares to put the magnets in. Yeah. And especially after the orders picked up it, it was just, I mean, it's taken hours. And so we had to kind of figure out another way. And um, that's kind of where we had to reach out and ask for help. And that's where we went out to some of the manufacturers and kind of work with them now instead of us building it directly at home because it's just too many orders to fulfill. Uh, but yeah, I think the magnets overall are are a good idea. I think there was some, there were some people that I talked to that were worried about the tarantulas being able to push open the magnets. And so we had to make sure that they were either strong enough or there was a way to prevent the tarantulas from, you know, pushing because they are, they are strong. And I mean, I used to have mm -hmm. a, uh, a full adult, um, Brachypoma smithy or a harmory. I'm not sure it was a long time ago. And, um, that tarantula was able to push up the whole screen, the whole screen mesh. And this was like years ago before we, had any acrylic tops or anything like that and it was able to push up the whole screen mesh on my uh, 10 gallon tank and i remember having to put like textbooks up on it because it was you know it was that strong so i know the magnets have to be pretty serious you know we we don't want anyone getting out very true yeah that's that's an issue that i've had with some of my screen enclosures um not just that the tarantulas are strong enough to push them out but that they can like that they, they break easy, especially those thin mesh ones. Um, tarantulas mm. can chew through them. I had one; it was a um, uh, Zoomed enclosure, one of their like glass ones that has a screen mesh, and my cat sat on it and it completely just ripped the mesh oh, completely yeah. out. Luckily, there wasn't a tarantula in it at the time, but I was like, "Yeah, that's a problem." Yeah. And I and I I uh, w when I got your all's enclosures in the mail, that was one of the first things I did was test just to see how strong those magnets were because uh, I, I i've there's a couple other uh, people out there that have made some enclosures that had magnets um and one of the issues was one they didn't stay glued so they kept falling off which was very frustrating but also they were just they were very um they were just weak magnets that sometimes wouldn't even hold the weight of the door let alone any pressure applied yeah and that was something i tried to showcase in my video was just like how strong i mean you got a lot of magnets but they're also they also seem like high quality strong magnets and it would like almost pull the door in and, and lock into place <laughs> i was i right. thought that yeah. was kind of cool yeah and this the second mechanism that we kind of tried to i tried to make sure that was built in there was that there's a channel built around the lid and so a tarantula really couldn't get his paws or claws under that channel and, and push it open and so um, a couple of the enclosures we made that were prototypes didn't have that, but we definitely changed that up. So I think, it, I mean, nothing's, nothing's impossible. Anything can happen, but I think it would be pretty unlikely for anything to get out. Um, of course, there's always room for improvement and we're always looking for new ideas. So, you know, if anyone has any or you have any, let us know. Yeah, I, I thought that was a, a very genius kind of feature to those enclosures that had that sliding door. Um, Cause it was like, there, there really is no way for the tarantula to, and, and I, I was using it for one of my scorpions and I knew the scorpion couldn't really crawl up the side, but I was like, if it could get its, its claws, something like, cause those things are like, I've had that thing. I was using like a, a thick reptile screen, you know, like the thick uh -huh. wire mesh. 
And I had like the locks on it and everything. Like I was like, there's no way a scorpion is going to be able to get out. And it was able to wedge itself up on the background, like in between the background and the top of the screen and push itself up, even with oh, those wow. strong locks, enough for it to like squeeze out. And it happened when I was, I actually was out of town and my kid's grandmother found the scorpion walking across the floor. Oh, my. Uh, kind of freaked out. I was like, of course that would happen when we weren't here. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's why I was like, it's what, one of the things I really liked about the tarantula cribs enclosures was that it was the, the, the way that the screen or the lid goes into the top of it. It's really uh, just not accessible. Um, right. It's, it's very cool. How yeah. long did it take you like just to design uh, these so, enclosures? Like how many prototypes you know, in, do you go through? Yeah. Initially like that, that first enclosure we built, I mean, it took s- several hours, I think on, on the computer just designing it and then that we had to cut it out and translate that over to the to the laser cutter and then from there we had to figure out how much of the acrylic is melting with the with the laser cutter and yeah that was kind of an adjustment i think mostly you figured that out yeah um but then after we kind of got that design um we we had to make some improvements with the ventilation and and all of that. So, I mean, it took, it took probably like six weeks or something for that first, very first one. Yeah. To get it just right. So that we were satisfied with it. Yeah. It took a little while. Yeah. About six weeks, um, with that very first enclosure. And then after that, we, it it went by faster. So each enclosure after that kind of was a little bit easier. And then when we started to work with some of the manufacturers, um, they had some ideas too. And, um, so we kind of worked with them and and everything kind of snowballed after that. So it's a little bit easier now, but that first enclosure was a good a good six weeks. I could imagine. And, and I've noticed that, uh, especially though you just sent me, it was like a large and a medium. I'm not exactly mm-hmm. sure how you have them labeled on right. your website, right. but uh, you have both cross ventilation and some top ventilation. Like how did you decide where to put the ventilation holes? So to be honest, a part of it is is not just functional like in terms of ventilation i wanted to have i wanted to have good aesthetics i wanted it to i wanted you to be able to see the tarantula or see whatever you're housing in there and i wanted there to be clarity and so i wasn't a fan of the enclosures that have too much ventilation not just because of humidity and all that i know that's a concern but also the ventilation holds kind of obstruct the view of the tarantula and so I felt that having a front that is mostly clear is a good idea and then a top. And so then going from there, we needed to also make sure there was adequate ventilation. And so I know cross ventilation is a big deal. So we just did one on uh, holes on the left and the right of the enclosure and then the top. Yeah. And and then the, the top and that for the sliding ones for the cubes. Uh, the holes are meant to be small enough because those are four slings, and so they're all around, and I don't feel like it obstructs obstructs the view. Um, in terms yeah. of an arboreal enclosure that we're that's coming out, I know cross ventilation is really important for that, and since that's a, a taller enclosure, we needed to have cross ventilation at the top and the bottom. Uh, a lot of the enclosures have it kind of right in the middle. Which is which is good, uh, but I think that obstructs the view a little bit. So I wanted to change it up just a tiny bit. So if you look on the yeah. website, you can kind of see the pictures of how the ventilation is on that. And I think I don't know if anyone else has done it like that, but you know we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it works out yeah. just fine. I look forward to seeing that. Now the uh, one one of the things I thought was really cool. Uh, you mentioned the the cubes and stuff. Um, that are more built for spiderlings. Now you you actually took into consideration the size of those ventilation holes so that a, a sling wouldn't be able to squeeze out of them. That's right. Yeah. Is so that, yeah, yeah. Those those ventilation holes are, are quite small. I, I I think they're about two millimeters or so. So I don't think I think even the the small it, it's fine for the smallest of, of slings. And the lid sits pretty yeah. flush. So. You shouldn't be having any, any issue getting out, and a sling can't push those magnets out either. So I think with yeah. with those, um, yeah, I th- the, the main purpose was for slings or dwarf tarantulas because uh, we don't make the cubes too much bigger just because it's pretty 
art and the, the bigger you make an enclosure, the thicker the acrylic needs to be. And there is a shortage of acrylic right now with the pandemic going on. And so it's hard to find really, acrylic. I did not know that thick acrylic. Yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess because, that makes sense. Yeah. With all the, the screen protectors and, you know, at the store, you got all the Shields. dividers, you know, the shields. There needs, there's a lot of acrylic in use. And so the price of acrylic right now is kind of expensive. Hopefully it goes down. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. If the supply and demand has changed, so the, the, that means that the price of acrylic that you use to make the enclosures has also gone up. Correct. Yeah, I think uh, about May, we were having a hard time getting any acrylic in. I think you yeah. looked around all over the place and we finally found a, someone who was getting some in intermittently but even then there's different color acrylic so there's you know black and gold and all all kinds of colors but we need to clear and the clear one is the one that's being sold out and so for a while it was really hard to find we just bought a ton of it and had it shipped to the house the mailman was like what is going on what are you guys doing <laughs> i'm sure that he loved you like i'm sure yeah. that would be very frustrating to uh start a business making acrylic enclosures during a pandemic when all of a sudden the availability of, of acrylic just kind of the bottom falls out and, and it's, yeah. it's really difficult to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I mean, you know, all things considered, there's the pandemic, pandemic, you know, was pretty tough for a lot of people, but all things considered, I think we starting a business during the pandemic, I think was a blessing in a sense as I mean, neither of us were working as much. And so we had, kind of something to do and start a new business. I mean, that being said, the acrylic is expensive and all that. And so it's a little bit stressful, but I think it's a little bit easier now to yeah. find acrylic. I haven't, I've been able to get it pretty easily over the last few weeks. So I think things are getting better. Yeah, I think so. And you guys, uh, you mentioned that you're located in St. Louis. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is going on in St. Louis? Because I, it, <laughs> I have been in the hobby for a while, and it seems like you guys have the Tarantula Takeover uh, Reptile Show. Uh, it's like a you know a show that, that it, it becomes like a Tarantula Expo. You've got YouTubers, you've got breeders. Like it seems like St. Louis is becoming a hub <laughs> for the Tarantula hobby. Like what, what what's going on there? I know it's it's pretty neat. You know, I didn't I didn't know that it was that that big around here until pretty much in the last few months or last year or so uh, you know they all they always have these reptile shows and we kind of go and slowly the tarantula section just kept getting bigger and bigger and thought it was pretty cool uh but then they had tarantula takeover i actually didn't make it to that unfortunately the first one uh the second yeah. one we did go to and we've been to that but the first one we didn't make it to but we definitely saw the people's youtube videos and all that and then cat being around here and simply spiders you know it's it's pretty neat for sure Actually, it's yeah, kind of I, uh, interesting because uh, I went to high school with uh, Dustin from Simply Spiders. And, did you? <laughs> uh, actually, actually, didn't even know it. Realized later on. That's funny. Yeah, I I was I got invited um, to the one in I, I think it was the first Tarantula Takeover, but it was like right after the Chicago or the Tinley NARBC, mm, and I was yeah. just like, yeah, that's that's too much traveling, and you know, like I'm, it just didn't seem feasible. And I also was kind of like, I guess in my mind, I was like, yeah, that's, it's going to be lame. And then I saw <laughs> all the pictures and videos. I was like, man, I really wish I would have gone. And I was kind of looking forward to maybe going this year, but with, you know, COVID and everything. Yeah. I didn't it was seem hard. Like a response. It was actually, thing to do. Um, it was actually really busy even for COVID. I was a little yeah. bit concerned, yeah. but it, it turned out to be. I mean, okay. if I lived, if I lived in St. Louis, I totally would have been there, but <laughs> I'm in a, a small town in the, the hills of West Virginia. And I didn't want yeah. to be the one dude that like left town and then came back with COVID because <laughs> my name would be all over the news. It's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Gave it to everyone in the holler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's, it's been fascinating for me to kind of watch. Um, cause like you mentioned, tarantula cats out there. Um, uh -huh. You know, she's been doing a lot. And you guys, there are tarantulas that are native to that area, correct? Like, I mean, yeah. do well, they, the they ever wander into the city? Uh, no, I, you know, I've never, I, I look for them. I haven't ever found one. And I'll admit, sometimes I go down to the, if I see a little hole in the ground, I'll try and take a little straw or a little piece of grass and try and lure one out. But I haven't seen anything, you know, not around here at least. Um, you know, I know Cat rescued one, the, the dumpster tarantula, but. I have yeah. one. We have the 
it's at the Hensi. I think it's just the Afon Palma Hensi that's around here. I don't think we have mm-hmm. anything else. And I think most of the range is southern, so probably down more in the Ozarks and south of um, south of uh, St. Louis. And then I think one of the barriers to the Hensi traveling up north is just the Missouri River. I actually don't think the uh. range goes up above that. I think I've read somewhere that the Missouri River is a barrier to them moving up north. That would make sense. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, just a little gossip. Have you have you actually have you met Tarantula Cat in person? <laughs> we have a couple times at, at one of the local pet stores around here. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. So I, I went to Arizona. My wife and I did, had our honeymoon in Sedona, and she got really frustrated because I, I just wanted to look for tarantulas while we were there. <laughs> we were doing hiking and stuff like that. I was like, we gotta, we gotta find a tarantula, and it was, it was frustrating because we would be, you know, like walking from our hotel room to a restaurant or something like that, and we'd hear people that we were passing on the sidewalk being like, "Oh my god, did you see that tarantula? That was so huge!" And I'd be like, "Where? Where did you see it?" <laughs> and I would go to where they described. There would be no tarantula there. <laughs> like we're, we're hiking, hiking on the trails and people are talking about, um, like we went to see these ruins um, and it was like way out in the canyon. And while we were riding out there, our guide was uh, like over the walkie talkie. Somebody was warning them, hey, we just came across, you know, a big tarantula on the trail. So be careful when you're taking your group down there. And I was, I was excited and the, in, we were there for like eight days and I didn't see a single tarantula. And this was like in September. You know what I mean? Like males should be walking around everywhere. Yeah, it seems like everybody else got to see one but me. Yeah. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I, I haven't. But made I, it down I there, in but... my yeah, but in my mind, for some reason, and I think it's probably just from watching uh, Tarantula Cat's video on the on the dumpster tarantula she found, like, uh, or just hearing people talk. For some reason, I thought that you know, in in St. Louis, they would just they'd just be like wandering the neighborhoods or something <laughs> like that. No, but I guess that I, makes sense with the river. Yeah, I think it's a little bit little bit further south and i'm sure if you look hard enough you can probably find something but I so is there yeah. like uh are there a lot of pet shops down there that that carry tarantulas like regularly yeah so well i guess the first tarantula i ever got was when i was 16 years old my parents didn't let me have one and um this was right after i could drive i got in the car and went to the pet store with my cousin and we uh, stopped by one of the <laughs> local mom and pop pet shops and they just happened to have what a red knee. And I don't know if it was a Smithy or a Harmony at that, at that time, but um, we picked it up and it, they, the pet store didn't kind of know what they had. They just said that someone dropped it off there. They sold it to me for $15 and just picked it up and it, it was pretty sweet. Didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, went home, yeah. put it in a ten-gallon tank. It was a, it was a sub-adult. It was probably already like four or five inches by then. Um, and just put some dirt in there and started feeding it crickets. And at that time, there wasn't really a lot of information out there. I mean, I remember trying to look on the internet, but there, there just wasn't a lot. But you know, I didn't really know what yeah. I was doing. I had a, I had probably like two or three inches of substrate, and then a 10 gallon tank. So it was pretty high. And then, uh, a screen mesh lid. And I remember it climbing up to the top and it did actually get its leg stuck a couple times. And I'd always have to kind of remove it and take it down. Never lost a leg or, or fell down or anything like that, thankfully. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was the first encounter with the pet store. And then after that pet smart and pet go and all that, they do in some stores sell some of the tarantulas, uh, but I've never bought one from there uh then they, we have a couple more pet shops uh, tropical world pets and exotic park are the two that i've kind of been to and kind of get all my stuff from now and those two happen to be the pet stores that we now kind of sell in so it kind of worked oh out. that's awesome yeah so you actually have your enclosures uh in brick and mortar stores yeah yep those two that's um, awesome exotic park a few months ago we had our first order there a few months ago and then after that tropical world pets so it's you know it's going good um they both have a pretty good selection of tarantulas so anytime you're in st louis definitely check them out yeah i have a uh one of the moderators in my facebook group uh debbie she works part-time at one in i think it's in st no o'fallon is that st louis area 
I don't even know. Kinda. Uh, O'Fallon, Illinois. There's a there is a I think there's a pet shop down there called Tie Dye Iguana. I've never been out there. Yeah. It's a little bit further from me, uh, but I heard they have a pretty good selection as well. They're at they're at all the pet expos too. They have a pretty big yeah stand usually. Yeah, I I usually admit I am not the smartest man in the world, especially when it comes to geography. <laughs> I've been doing podcasts with people in the UK, and I have to admit, like. I really have no idea, like any relation <laughs> to where, where you are in in relation to where I am. Um, so, it, like in my mind, Missouri is just all St. Louis. Like I forget that <laughs> it's actually a very large state. Yeah. So it's probably yeah. not as close to you in reality as as it is in my mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're um, you know we're about half an hour out from Illinois, so it's not not too far. But I just haven't made it out there. I understand. Have you uh, have you ever gone to NARBC, the North American Reptile Breeders Conference? So we went to the one in in St. Louis or in St. Charles, but we did not go to. We haven't been to Tinley. Always wanted to make it out there, but it's just never worked out. Um, yeah, but, you know. Hopefully, the, the St. Louis one was okay. I heard that it wasn't as big, obviously, as the one in Tinley Park, Chicago. But hopefully, next yeah. year, if if COVID can kind of calm down. Yeah, it's where I kind of screwed myself is I had never really been to a reptile expo before. Um, there was There's one about two hours south of me uh, in a small town in West Virginia. It's like a traveling expo, so it'll be like in the capital one month, and then the next month it's like in Parkersburg and then Beckley. So it tries to like go all the way around the state, and I uh, we just happened to be like I was coming back from visiting my uh, my parents. My wife and I stopped in the town and I was like, Hey, there's there's a reptile expo here. Let's check it out. And we go there, and it was probably ten dealers. Like I paid ten bucks to get in, and then you walk in, it's like this is it. <laughs> like it's just like a circle of tables around the outside of this small room, and it didn't really have anything exciting. And they had, they they had a couple tarantulas. Um, they were labeled baboon spiders, and I was like, well, do you know what what species this is? And they're like it's a baboon spider. I'm like, do you know what country it's from? Like, can I, can I, and then they open it up and the, the two they had was, uh, an H Mac and an OBT. And they just like, they're opening them up looking at like, like it's no big deal. <laughs> tarantula's not going to hurt you. I'm like, that is a, cr- that's a crazy species to just have and, and leave open on your table. Like I would not yeah. do that, but definitely. I, oh, they, they did have a, uh, Lossiodora periabana, uh, full grown female with the enclosure. Uh, of course it had like an inch of substrate in there, you know, the poor thing had webbed the place completely. It looked, it looked, it was a beautiful spider. It just wasn't kept yeah. well, but they were one like $500 you know, like includes the oh, enclosure. Wow. And I'm like, that's a 10 gallon <laughs> fish tank. Like that's not, that's 10 bucks. Come on. <laughs> wow. It was, was crazy. that a long time ago it, or. Oh, four years ago, maybe. Okay. But like that, I saw, I went there and I was really disappointed and I was like, yeah, I'm not paying to go in somewhere to, you know, when I've got a better collection at my house, that's kind yeah. of like my mind, yeah. my mindset. So I'd never went to another one until, um, Tanya, fear not tarantulas invited mm-hmm. me out to their booth at Tinley. Yeah. And I went there and I was like, this is a, a completely different world. Like there yeah. are species here. I saw your seen. Yeah. Like, it was amazing. It, it yeah. really blew my mind. And now that's like the only ones I, I just keep going back to that one. <laughs> it's a, so I went to, uh, I think it's called steel city reptile expo. It's in, um, right outside Pittsburgh. And that one was pretty good. It was like in an, uh, in an ice hockey rink. And that kind of like, okay, oh, cool. maybe the smaller shows aren't all so bad. Because they had, they had a good selection. They even had a couple tarantula dealers there. Uh, nice. But you don't see a whole lot of people that are just selling tarantula enclosures, which I think is something that's, like, I mean, for years, that's something that's been really frustrating to me is that I always have to buy a reptile enclosure and then retrofit right. it for a tarantula. Or I have to... Uh, the ones that are for sale, like there's a lot on, you know, like the they're coming from China or something like you can order them on Wish or on Amazon, but you got to like put them together with rubber bands or uh, they're just, they're really low quality and they end up being more frustration than they're worth. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's really cool that you guys have, have gotten into this niche. I mean, is it, are you, are you feel like people are responding well to it? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think kind of part of it is that I've kind of always liked terrariums and just enclosures and making cool setups and and that kind of thing um and so we wanted to have something that could kind of accommodate that because we liked having the display tarantulas and all of that and i think 
part of the issue is that none of these real big companies are are making anything is because you know it's so niche that I just don't know if that they feel that they can make a lot of money on it and from our standpoint we're not like a big company or anything like that and so we're not our main goal isn't to try and make a, a ton of money we just wanted to have something cool in it we didn't realize it would pop off so big and I think that was <laughs> kind of with that that Patreon video that you had and I think that's what kind of made all of this take off and and so we've kind of gone with it and enjoy it we really enjoy it and I think yeah it has we I think it has picked up I mean when we started our Instagram in May we had um you know, like 100 followers and now we're up to almost 3000 and I think it's just wow. picking up and picking up steam and I mean, there's still a long way to go, a lot of improvements to make. And, and from a business standpoint, there's a lot of a lot of uh, room to grow and a lot of improvements to make. Uh, for example, shipping. Shipping's an issue. Um, after all these YouTube videos and all that, the orders are just coming in and it's pretty it's just me and me and her. And so it's pretty hard to keep up. And we got two kids at home. So what we're going to do is. We're in the process of transitioning out to a fulfillment company and all our products are going to be stored in a, a warehouse and then they're just going to be packaged and shipped out by a third party. And so I think that'll let us focus on running the business and um, allow us to kind of grow and expand and, and also have better customer satisfaction from that standpoint. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. I, I've noticed that with my like just selling you know, my stupid t-shirts online. Like it got to the, like I was ordering them and then having to store them and then package them. And, you know, as I'm, I'm, I'm I screw up a lot. So I would send the wrong t-shirts to the yeah. wrong people. <laughs> and I was just, yeah. I was, I was, I was like, this is, it became a full-time job just dealing with shipping and tracking and, right. and, and oh, yeah. just outsourcing that to a drop shipper was probably one of the best decisions yeah. I think I've made. Uh, it just yeah. made my life a whole lot easier. For sure. Uh, and, and I couldn't, gonna I couldn't fake, but, it happens. Yeah. I couldn't imagine though probably. doing enclosures. <laughs> like especially people yeah. that are ordering multiple ones. Like that would be so frustrating. Right. Yeah, so you guys you guys hardest, work on this. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, one of the hardest parts about the enclosures is just that the fact that acrylic is durable, but I mean it, it can't survive a big fall. And so just shipping. Shipping lately's kind of been a mess with the pandemic. Um things are delayed. You know, they have less staff available, so you know, there's a there's a big, big hurdle there, but shipping the enclosures and then they crack if they if they fall. And that's costly mm. on just the shipping end because it costs like it costs like 15 bucks, 15 to 20 bucks. If I'm shipping to California. It costs 20 dollars to ship out a large enclosure. Uh, so that's yeah. 20 dollars gone. And then the enclosure itself, we've got to replace it. And so that's a that's a big problem. And I'm so I'm hoping that with the fulfillment company, maybe they have better connections or even just packaging ideas um, we try and do what we can with foam inserts and all that but still sometimes they break and it's gotten better but i think there's still room for improvement there yeah i, I was i was impressed with the two packages you sent me because my the would the, i like i said i'm in a small town um especially compared to st louis but <laughs> I get my package delivered to a small town outside of the town I live in. I get an oh, even okay. smaller, tiny town. There's like three people at the post office. So I know them personally <laughs> because I, my, my day job, I do a lot of shipping, uh, sell a lot of stuff on eBay for the business I work for. And okay. I know how rough just those individuals are on packages. Even if I'm like, this is glass, please be careful. They're like, I'll, I'll see him walk out the door and throw <laughs> yeah. it into the truck. I'm like, God, yeah. come on, Steve. Like, we know each other. We've been knowing each other for years. Why are you doing me like this? Yeah. So when I just assume like anything I get sent, if it's, if it's not, that's why like, I don't, I try not to have any live animals sent through USPS, mm-hmm. even if they're not uh, uh, venomous. Like if it's something like isopods or something that somebody could send legally through the post office, I'm always like, just use FedEx. Trust me, I'll pay the extra because I know that FedEx will hold it at the hub and, they may be just as rough with the packages. I don't know, but I know those guys are rough with packages because I see it. <laughs> well, but when yeah. you got those enclosures, I was I didn't even think about how fragile they were, and I opened them up, and I mean they they were packed really. There was no cracks, no scratches. It was like you had them the enclosures inside of a box, like, and then that box in a box with foam right. and stuff. So I mean, it, it seemed like it was it takes a lot of effort for you guys yeah. packing those up. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I we've experimented. You. 
We've, I've tried to, when we first started, I sent a few out that didn't have any, uh, just a normal box with some bubble wrap. Bubble and wrap. yeah, and it, you know, not every single one cracked, but we did get a higher return, probably like, I don't know, 5% of them were cracking. Um, so then that was just too much and too expensive. So now we go to a foam, uh, a foam insert and then the corners, the, yeah, corner protectors and then a box inside of that. So the box that holds acrylic is not touching the outer box. So far, that's yeah. been pretty good. I've only had one come back broken. So fingers crossed. Well, it reminded me of the same style of packaging that people use when they're shipping out live tarantulas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, are there any live tarantulas in here? <laughs> like, nope, just enclosures. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I, I, I imagine that that's got to be tough. Um, yeah. So you guys, you guys, this is like, uh, are you all married or? Yeah, yeah. yeah married actually it's kind of funny when we we've been married uh seven years going on eight and i don't think either of us had really been to a a reptile show before that but pretty much a month after we got married i think one of the big reptile shows i don't i don't remember if it was repticon or something came by and um we went together and that's where we picked up a few reptiles or three turtles right very cool yeah yeah but then they got they got pretty big and we moved and we had to donate them to the city museum yeah yeah so you're both you're both into this you're both into the hobby (laughs) um so you know she she started it with making it and designing it doing all the computer work on adobe and all of that and so she still helps with that but now i've pretty much taken over i think most of the business and um that's mostly because we have two little ones and one on the way come in so yeah well i don't mean just making enclosures um i mean like just keeping exotic pets in general I mean, is that yeah. something you're both into, or is it mainly oh, just yeah. you and and she's supporting you? Oh no, she no, just no, no. she just picked up a, <laughs> a panther chameleon at oh wow at NARBC, so that's her her newest addition right now. Yeah, and Very then she cool. picked up a, a corn snake a few months ago. But that was mostly for the kids; they wanted that. Oh, yep. the kids love that. Yeah. My my love parents it. my parents would only uh, they. They were really weird. I could never get a tarantula or a scorpion when I was a kid. Um, but I, I had hamsters and uh, like tree frogs. And there was like a lot of salamanders and, and newts and stuff out where I am. So uh-huh. I, I would go to Boy Scout camp or something, always come back with a turtle or some some kind of thing. And they'd let me keep it. And so I always had like a whole bunch of, I guess, I guess you would kind of call them exotic pets. Um, uh-huh. and my mom always teases me because I was in elementary school and I had some hamsters and they had babies and I had like <laughs> set this thing up with the, uh, the pet shop here. It was like back when there was actually locally owned pet shops. Like now it's all just Petco or PetSmart. It seems at least in my yeah. area. Yeah. But they, I would bring them the babies and they would buy them from me a dollar a piece that I could use to then buy supplies, uh, for my hamsters and stuff like that. So I kind of had like a business going at a young age, just breeding hamsters to pay for the hobby. <laughs> it was kind That's of cool. a, that's it was cool. a cool little yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was I was really excited when I was able to to get my first tarantula, and my wife is supportive, but she is really she doesn't she doesn't she's not a huge fan of spiders. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she allows it, and she, I think she likes watching them and looking at them, but she uh, she definitely doesn't want to be feeding them or rehousing or anything like that. Yeah. She'll yeah. Be I think them while I'm I doing that. Do that I think I think she's kind of the same way. Yeah. I mean pretty supportive you told me i could get a t saladonia but um but we i think i mostly take care of the tarantulas yeah. but you still i mean you do some of the you do like the she takes care of the dubias that we are yeah. trying to breed Ooh. Panther, so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> she my wife now my wife does like snakes she uh picked up yeah. um an eastern king snake and she got a ball python and stuff like that oh, cool. uh, but they're in the same room so it's i usually end up taking care of them just because yeah. I'm already down here doing stuff with the tarantulas, so then I just go ahead and clean their enclosures or feed them or whatever. So she kind of yeah. she lucked out there, but that, <laughs> yeah. it's cool when you you have like a partnership. You know what I mean? I think that's really cool. You, this is something you guys can do together. Yeah, uh, I mean, our parents think we're crazy, but <laughs> I mean, you had turtles like a long time ago yeah. too, right? Yeah, turtles. You had, you had turtles growing up, and you had birds, and yeah, I mean, we had cats. Cats. They didn't that. allow anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, I just had that uh, one. I mean, I had that one tarantula for like 16 years or something. And um, yeah. that, that brachypelma. And 
you know, I don't know. It must, it was, it was a mature female. I think it just died from old age, but for a while then, then we went to turtles and, and that kind of thing and, and fish and then got back into the Yeah, we had like now. salt water and freshwater fish. Yeah. That was cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I've never yeah. been brave enough to try saltwater fish. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it a lot fun, of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah. He'd yeah. always be measuring the water and making sure the salt levels were okay. Yeah. It, it got busy. And that was before. I can kids. imagine. Yeah. Yeah, we were in a small apartment. My dad would always say, he feels like he's at Red Lobster whenever he comes to our apartment. Because <laughs> then we had, we had like brine shrimp that we oh, were yeah, like we breeding really for, the, for the cichlids. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I have a, uh, my dad had a fish tank. It was, he had like a, like there was just always a fish tank in our living room growing up. But it was fresh yeah. water and, you know, it, I, but I never really, I, I tried to get one for my kid uh, a couple years ago. He was, he really wanted to get some fish. And I just, I don't know what it is. I, I always struggle, even with freshwater tanks. I was yeah. not able to, to keep them uh, uh, going more than like six months. Everything would just start dying off. And Do you have I, a, I'm trying something new. Now? I don't, I have a paludarium that has, uh, a, I've got like the bottom of it's kind of like a four gallon fish tank. Okay. And I was talking to uh, the guys at the pet shop. I'm like, I need something that, I can do. <laughs> I was like, I explained to my struggles and they suggested uh, snails, ghost shrimp, and uh, a beta. They're like, you got a beta, <laughs> just one beta in there. You don't have to worry about anything else. And I was like, all right, nice. cool. Yeah. So, so far that's going well. Um, yeah. I was, I'm making a YouTube video on it, but I'm, I'm taking my time because I don't want to like make a video like, hey, I've got this awesome beta <laughs> living in this paludarium and then the next week it dies. So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take our time here. <laughs> yeah. Make sure I, I've got this husbandry down. I know. I'm uh, excited but, to see what, what you're housing in there. Yeah. It's it's part of the reason I haven't told anyone yet is because I have an idea of what I'm putting in there, but I really got to give enough. I just got to see how the, how the whole enclosure develops. You know, like I don't want to put a species in there that's not, it's not going to work. I, I'm, I'm like 90% sure it's going to work for this, uh, this tarantula. Um but there, there's issues. Uh, I mean, when you have a waterfall feature in an enclosure and stuff like that, uh, it, there can be a lot of issues with just it getting too humid or water right. leaking. And, you know, I got to make sure everything is, is nice and sealed and set up, set up well before I yeah. introduce a tarantula in there. But, Get the isopod colony going and springtails and all yeah. that. So it's, yeah. a, it's been a slow process, but it's coming together. Um, I think it's, yeah, I don't even know. I've, I set up the waterfall because I didn't want to run it all the time. Uh, and mm-hmm. I have a thermostat for my snake's enclosure, like for its heat mat. And, it, you know, it turns on and off throughout the day. And it had multiple plugins you could have for whatever reason. Like you could plug in the heat mat and the heat light and all that kind of stuff. But I'm only using uh, the heat pad. So I plug the waterfall into that. So the waterfall only kicks on when the tarantulas or when the sp- uh, snake's heat pad turns on. Oh, nice. So it's like just That's sporadically cool. throughout the day. It's kind of neat. That's neat. I, I'm yeah. enjoying that. Yeah. That'll be a, that'll yeah. be a good video. So you said you got your first tarantula uh, when you were 16 years old, and there wasn't a whole lot of information out there. Um, yeah. So I'm I curious, like, I mean, I mean, not to like call you out, put you on blast, and anything like that, but uh, like, I guess what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to expose your age, but I'm just curious, like, how long ago was that? When was this? Um, so I'm I'm 33 now, so I, I don't know, do the math, but we, yeah, I mean. That we had that tarantula, or I had that tarantula for, I don't know, another, what, I'm, 10, 15 years, I don't know exactly, um, until it passed. And then after that, it wasn't until after that that we, we kind of got the next one. Um, but yeah, 33 years old and yeah, trying to trying to get this tarantula cribs thing going. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to figure, because I know when I first started, there wasn't a lot of information out there, but it was also... Um, I mean, the internet just wasn't what it is today. Like I, I still had dial up back then. <laughs> I mean, we had, a, yeah. Yeah. uh, I think I, I had a girlfriend, we had an apartment and we had like, it was a two bedroom apartment. It was just the two of us. So that was like our office is what we called it. But neither one of us did any, you know, we worked retail, we worked for hot topic. <laughs> so it wasn't like we needed an office. It was more like the room that we put the the computer in, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, you know, and it was like MySpace and, uh, you know, Napster. Lime wire, you know, like that <laughs> yeah, was what I we used that. it for. Yeah, uh, so wire. I, oh, yeah. I say that a lot. Like I didn't get information off. Like there wasn't anything available. But then I'm also at the same time like, well, 
maybe I just wasn't looking. Like I, I don't. There could have been stuff. I never even. Yeah. It never even crossed my mind. Yeah. To yeah. Look. I mean, but that's true. My I, experience. I, my experience was very similar to yours, where it was. Uh, you know, I, I had a, a rosehair tarantula, but I kept yeah. it deplorably. <laughs> can, can, you know, compared to what you know, we how we keep them now. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it. You know, there. It wasn't easy to find information. At least I don't know. There might have been some forums. I don't know when arachnoboards and all all that started. Um, but definitely, yeah. it was not easy to find anything back then. I, they had the care sheets at like PetSmart, but you know, not <laughs> they, talk about that. the same care sheets they had then, they still have today. I don't yeah. think they've updated them at all. Yeah. The sponge uh, in the water. You know. Yeah, it's pretty wild stuff. <laughs> now you guys, uh, <laughs> I, I've made this video um, kind of talking about the enclosures that you guys sent me. And I've had a lot of people from the UK and from Spain and Norway and like just all across Europe. Like we love these enclosures. How can we get them? And I'm sure you've been talking about the shipping and you know, it's very cost prohibitive, but I mean, have you tried to figure out any way to ship internationally? Is that a possibility sometime in the future? Yeah. So I mean, we, we get those messages all the time. And honestly, I get so many, I can't reply to them all. Um, people are like, why are you not shipping? Or people are getting kind of <laughs> angry. It's kind of funny. <laughs> but, and I mean, you know, I, I mean that lightheartedly. But it's right now with the pandemic, I think it's just pretty hard to get that going. I did ship one enclosure to Canada once. And I think the shipping was like between 20 and $40 or something like that. So it was like a... $25 enclosure and it ended up being like $45 or something just with the shipping. Um, but in the future, I, I hope to be able to ship at least to England and then Europe uh, first. Yeah. And then kind of go from there. The way we'll have to do it is we'll have to figure out a, a distributor in, in the United Kingdom or in Europe or something like that. And so I don't yeah. know. I don't know any offhand uh, I'm not too well connected over there, but you know, if someone listening knows something then we can definitely get something started. Um, and it's definitely something we're interested in. I think it would be the next best step for the company. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a, a good idea. And we're definitely looking into it. I'm, I definitely have already emailed a few people and just waiting on responses and waiting to try and figure things out, cost and all that. I'm sure it'd be a lot easier once acrylic is, is more available and the pandemic yeah. is, is starting to wind down. Yeah. whenever that is going to be but yeah I, I didn't even think about it when i made the video I, you probably mentioned it but i, I didn't even think the, about the issues of shipping internationally <laughs> and like just got inundated with messages and stuff i'm like look i'm not tarantula cribs customer service <laughs> but i can't speak for them but i'm sure it when they can ship to other countries they definitely will yeah uh so i thought it'd be cool to to, to bring it up and and yeah see if there's any kind of time yeah. frame i mean i i know people I seem very excited to another country is just the shipping would be very expensive and i think that most people wouldn't wouldn't want that right now and and um yeah i need to figure out a cheaper way to do it and then we can go from there yeah that's, that's it makes it very difficult even like when i was before i got a drop shipper and i was just shipping t-shirts and stickers and stuff just the i mean the, the shipping itself to like you know europe was expensive but then there was like vat and customs mm -hmm. like all of these other fees and people were complaining like i had to pay as much in customs as i did for the shirt and i'm like i'm i'm sorry <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. i don't know how to exactly. get around that yeah um but i found a a company that anybody that that orders pretty much anywhere that's outside of the u.s they just make the shirts in that country like it's a, a scandinavian oh, cool. country or something like that so they just make them and ship them from there so that, that they can service all of Europe, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah. when you do that, it, it really kind of, yeah, I, I just have no idea what the quality of it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. it's kind of sketchy when you're doing it that way. Yeah. But yeah, so far, nobody's, nobody's really complained too much. For sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I think what we'd have to do is, because now, now we don't make most of the enclosures in-house. Just there, there's too many. So we, we, you know, outsource to a manufacturer. So we'll have the manufacturer maybe just ship it directly instead of shipping it to our facility and then and then out to yeah. the United Kingdom or something like that. We'll have to work something out. But it, you know, we're trying to work on it. We'll see. Hopefully, out the quickest I would say would be like three months. 
Yeah, I had somebody send me a message, and they were complaining um, just about the the price of acrylic enclosures, like mm-hmm. how much they are. And I was like, I, I understand where you're coming from, but at, and I don't know if this is just a coincidence or whatever, but it seems like not too long after you guys started making enclosures, oh, I'm going to get it wrong. I think it's Zilla came out with their, they came out with these acrylic enclosures for inverts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they are... I mean, the one I was looking at was like thirty-five bucks, and it was like oh, four by four by six or four by four by eight or something like that. You know, it was like a, a small juvenile arboreal enclosure for thirty-five dollars, and it just they they just seem. I mean, you like you got to put them together, and it, it just it just did not look like a a high quality product. Right. Uh, so that's yeah. kind of what I was trying to explain to him. I was like, it's just acrylics expensive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Acrylic is, I mean, if I took it, if I made a six inch cube, um, so six by six by six, it would take me two sheets of acrylic and each sheet cost just the sheet cost about seven bucks. So you're looking at $14. And then after that, that goes into, that's just the like the raw material, not like the glue or the magnets or anything else and so i mean definitely right now it's pretty expensive and i think that is part of the reason that costs are highest i mean if acrylic cost comes down then then the cost of the enclosures would definitely come down it's but it's also like price. that's just kind of the market but that's just what the market i mean when you compare any kind of custom enclosure um especially the acrylic ones to anybody else selling them for whatever other reason that they're all about around the same price yeah and something you guys do that I think is really cool is the custom engraving. Um, yeah. Like you, you, that you sent me some that had the tarantula collective logo mm-hmm. etched in them, which people have been like sending me like they want to buy some of those, and I'm like, uh, yeah. not yet, <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> but you can you can engrave like pretty much anything in there, right? Yeah, and that, and the engraving part is actually where most of what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so she kind of takes it and designs it on the computer, and then. You can talk about it a little bit. Yeah, how difficult is it is it to do that? Um, it, it'll take a few hours. Like if somebody sends me a logo, I kind of have to play with the vectors a little bit, like on um, Adobe Illustrator, to make sure that the laser doesn't go over some points and all the points are connected nicely. Well, once that's in, then I just send it over to you. Then, yeah. or or then like then we'll set it up on the machine, kind of do a test run to see how it engraves, make sure the um, it's not engraving too deep or it's not um, too light. I don't want to make sure that the lines are all pretty close to each other. So it's a clean engrave. So it, it looks white um, when we engrave the backside. It looks white when, from the front. Um, just to kind of keep all the color, the that white color consistent throughout the entire logo. Yeah. It definitely sometimes takes a couple runs yeah. to, to get through. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you do most of the computer work and... Mm. And the graphic design part and then like we kind of build it on this end over here um but i think with so many orders it just got we, we got pretty hard to keep on doing new engravings so we kind of put that on hold for right now until we can kind of catch up with everything else outsource the shipping and then we can get yeah. back into the engraving because it just doing one by one it took it was, you know, it's taking, yeah it takes a little bit of time yeah people's orders were getting way too delayed doing that i kind of feel like what you just alluded to was that uh she's the brains behind the operation and you're the labor that's exactly right <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> so you, when you guys do the engraving when you were doing the engraving what did anybody have anything crazy that they wanted engraved on there that you were just like what in the world <laughs> um there was it all pretty standard no i mean 99 percent of the time it was like just the, was, la- yeah, Latin like name. the names and then some people would put their um like the their nicknames for their for the pet yeah, um, nicknames for a pet, like, things like that. Someone actually reached out to me one time and didn't even want, I don't know how they found me, they didn't even want a tarantula enclosure. They wanted oh. a, a jewelry box. Oh, yeah. So it said ice, huh. right? What did it say? Ice, ice, ice box. Baby, or ice box. Yeah, it said ice box. Nice. I don't know how they found me. So we, <laughs> we, we added a hinge one. to it and a locking mechanism. Yeah, that's what they wanted. Yeah, but it was basically like the same design minus the holes. Yeah. <laughs> and he kept his yeah. watch and wallet in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good you put your valuables inside of a clear box that locks yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. that's pretty neat that was one of our yeah, I, like, first orders too yeah nice 
Now I had a, uh, I had tried uh, making my own acrylic enclosures a couple years ago, um, but essentially all I did was I bought like off Amazon, uh, just an acrylic shoebox or something like that, and then tried to put on hinges and a lock. And I don't think any of them are still around. I think every one yeah. that I made fell apart. <laughs> you know, like, and it was always at the most inopportune time. I'd be like feeding everybody before I leave town, and then. <laughs> the latch that keeps the door shut would fall off. And I'm like, oh, no. What am I going to do now? Yeah. And I was using, a, a, I don't remember what, I used so many super glue. I used epoxy. I yeah. used, uh, I mean, all, I tried to like melt it together. Like <laughs> nothing, nothing would work. How do, you, how do you guys, like how does that, I mean, I'm not asking you to give away trade secret or anything, but how did you find things that would adhere to acrylic? Like was yeah. that difficult? Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually. Like, we, we would go out to like, the hardware store and like Walmart and just pick up whatever glue we could find. Like we had all different kinds of super glue. There's so many different glues out there. Yeah. There was even acrylic glue, like super glue, but for acrylic that didn't work very well either. You yeah. it, you yeah. used a marker to draw where you wanted the glue to stick and then it was just messy. Yeah. We spent a lot of money in different uh, kinds yes. of super glue. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, yeah. Oh. We tried epoxy too. That was too messy. Yeah. Um, there was that um, aquarium. Yeah. What is that material? Like silicone. Yeah, like silicone. Okay, that was but... too messy. Mm. It didn't sit well. Um, and then we needed something to, to dry fast enough so that we could hold the sides together. But we don't want to be sitting there for a while holding them, just for a few seconds. So we kind of move right. can move the pieces around if we need to. Yeah, it's we were using, initially we were using like right angle clamps and things like that because the super glue was taking too long to, yeah. to, to bind the acrylic but at the yeah. end of the day i think the really the glues just don't work that well no. um so acrylic the best way to deal with acrylic is to actually weld it together and so that's what that's what we do we chemically weld it together uh, it, you oh, know wow. there's still there's still errors that can happen definitely and with that welding solution there it can stain the acrylic and all of that and then there might be little pockets where water can get through and things like that. So there's a lot of trial and error and there, you know, they're, it's all hand, handmade. Even the ones that we manufacture have manufactured, they're still handmade just by other people um, at this yeah. point. And so there can be variations and there can be little divots and things like so that. So all the enclosures are essentially handmade and, and welded like or, or yeah. I guess acrylic weld, whatever you call it, chemical yeah, welding. Chemically welded. Yeah. They're chem yeah. Chemically yeah so that, that's a lot of work that's going into to each enclosure yeah. like how long do you say how how long would you estimate it takes to make one enclosure um yeah like our first one took like hours that yeah. oh my god we yeah oh so wow late. yeah um, it took hours just figuring it out <laughs> yeah. but then like once you kind of got once, it down once you get it down and once you get down with, with the application of using like the the solutions and all that it it still takes like probably an hour hour and a half yeah especially if you have to make the little magnet pieces and then that that adds on some time so just i mean if i got like 10 orders in a day and that you know that's talking about like almost a day and a half worth of work so we just can't do it all at home now yeah. especially if you're that doesn't include that yeah that time. doesn't include that, doesn't include that time that. like it takes to set fix the logo to engrave and then actually engrave it on in the machine mm -hmm. yeah and all that takes like an extra yeah, i'm sure it could be faster if we had more manpower yeah more people like an assembly line kind of thing but we yeah. don't so i, know. I mean that, you said you have two kids right yeah yeah, yeah. born two, two put boys. them to work <laughs> no, they're, you know. well, maybe Actually, in a couple years <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, they would love to help like, yeah they would. they're so intrigued yeah. by it. like whatever we're doing they want to come in and uh you know we'll let them push the button to start the machine up or to turn the fan on to ventilate the room they they like the the older one he likes to take part yeah He's yeah. four. Yeah. So. Yeah. His this favorite. might be a dumb question, but do you do you have to do the engraving first and then build the enclosure, or do you build the enclosure mm -hmm. and then engrave it? Right. Yeah, yeah we, we engrave to. first. Yeah, you have we to engrave, engrave first. it first. Then we'll go through and cut the holes out, and then we cut the actual squares out for the cube in that order. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. that's just what we found to be the best. Like, if you cut the squares first and then make the holes, sometimes piece of acrylic drops just by a couple of like millimeters and the holes might not be even 
Um, and then we engrave on that flat sheet. Once a yeah. cube's made, it's too hard to get that cube in the machine to engrave. Yeah. I mean, there are laser cutters out there that can do it, but just for an at-home kind of thing, yeah. we can't. That's why we are size limited mm-hmm. is just because our laser cutter at home cannot fit a larger enclosure, pretty much bigger than the six inches. And so, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. If you spent like thousands There's, and yeah. thousands of dollars, you can get a cool laser cutter that could do it, but not the one we have. So you, uh, <laughs> you mentioned that you, you have some larger enclosures in the works. Like what, what, what are we talking yeah. about? Yeah. So after that first run, we got a lot of um, requests for, enclosures that, that would hold a Sturmy or, you know, some of the larger like seven, eight inch tarantulas. And so we're going to work on it. There's going to, we are working on it. There's going to be, they should be coming out hopefully in the next six to eight weeks. It's going to be, it's going to be a challenge with shipping. It's going to be expensive. The acrylic alone is going to be like, yeah, it's thicker acrylic, which is a lot more expensive. And it's it's going to be a lot a lot of work, so it's going to be a higher price point, obviously, unfortunately. Yeah, but we'll come out with a limited run and see how it goes. And um, it, that's it'll just be, kind of the nature of acrylic. Like the the larger the enclosure, you, you said, like the thicker it actually has to be. Yeah, like, does for that sure. so it doesn't warp or like yeah, both? Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't warp or yeah. or just crack uh, because the larger the longer the sheet of acrylic gets, if it's thinner, it's going to be more. Like it's going to bend too much. Yeah, it's going to be like if you just held it out, it would kind of bow in the middle. And so you have to get a nice thick piece of acrylic and the thicker it's like exponentially more expensive. And so um, this one will be it'll be 20 inches long, uh, 12 inches wide, 12 inches high. And it should be good for most bigger tarantulas. I mean, some people still go bigger for the the Sturmies and all that. But I think that's probably our limit, our our limitation right now. Um, I mean, that sounds is, comparable to like a 10 gallon aquarium. Those correct. dimensions. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a, it's the same length as a 10 gallon, I believe. And then a little bit wider, nice. so a little bit more floor room for the terrestrial. Yeah. There's only a few species that I can think of off the top of my head that would need anything larger than that. Yeah. You know, like maybe a, a Sturmy or a, a salmon pink bird eater or something, Yeah, but they yeah. would be fine in a 10 gallon. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's I mean, pretty it, neat. initially we, it, the tarantula cribs, the name came about just because we started with one, it was like a crib for housing something, but two is just that it was for tarantulas that were slings or juveniles or dwarfs or things like that. And so, but we've kind of ventured into the, some of the bigger enclosures now, and it turns out, I think that's the, the most popular one right now is the, the large one, which is 12 inches by eight inches by eight inches. And so I think nice. we'll kind of have to focus on making slightly bigger enclosures. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting. You brought up where the name came from. Because in my mind, what maybe it's just my age is showing. But it went, when it went tarantula cribs, what I was thinking was MTV cribs. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this yeah. is the, the high-end, <laughs> fancy, top-of-the-line <laughs> enclosure for your tarantula. Yeah. Like that's, no, that's what it's I was, definitely a play on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was very cool. Because, I mean, it, and, and I'm not just, like, blowing smoke here. They are, like, the highest quality enclosures that I have in my like, – and I'm counting, like, the Zilla and Exoterra and stuff like that. Like, these are enclosures designed specifically to hold tarantulas. But I saw uh, Russ from Aquarimax just came out with a YouTube video where he's high, he's using isopods in his. He he's, was talking about how they, they're great for isopods. I know that they're great for scorpions. Um, what other species have you heard people uh, are, are keeping in your enclosures? I've had some requests for uh, a centipede, but, and I do, I do have, I try and buy, I try and get the, the inverts or whatnot that I think will be in there so I can test it out myself. But the one I have is quite small. So, um, yeah, we do have some millipedes and then just other isopods. So the scorpion, the tailless whip scorpion, um, have the centipede that's still small. Uh, what else? I actually have my my uh, baby that milk snake. Yeah, I have the, the baby milk snake in it still right now, which I don't. That's necessarily what I was, I was actually recommend for everyone, but it's doing well. In that's there what right I, was, now. I was actually going to ask is if um uh, if anybody had ever kept any kind of 
uh, reptiles or anything. Because I know it could be difficult if you have to have like a heat lamp or a heat pad or something like that. Yeah. But I thought maybe yeah. like some kind of frogs or something. Yeah. There might be some reptiles. One that person would, that would was benefit. keeping a, a Pac-Man frog in it. In it so nice. It, I think it did did okay with that. And I've noticed there's like there's two. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can you can divide up our hobby like in groups of people. But I've I've noticed that there's definitely a, a group that really uh, they just they're okay with keeping their tarantulas in Tupperware containers that are cloudy and you can't even see them. You know, I mean, you got to like open up the lid to see what's inside. Mm-hmm. And then there are people that like to have all of them on display. And I, yeah. obviously I'm on, I'm in that camp. Like yeah. every tarantula I have, even little slings, I like to have them in a nice looking enclosure uh, with, you know, nice decorations that are on display. Cause that's the reason that I'm keeping them is it's, it's like works of art or, uh, yeah. you know, it, so I want to have them in, in a nice enclosure uh, that, you know, is aesthetically pleasing yeah. uh, and, and that I can see through very well. Um, yeah. And I think one of the cool things with your all's business is that you're not just selling enclosures, right? You're also selling, you also have like uh, decorations and stuff available. Yeah. We're, well, we're trying to head in that direction. I think that, I think that the primary goal is always going to be enclosures, but a lot of people were requesting that we kind of had some decoration that would fit in the enclosures. Cause a lot of the things again are for the pet store for reptiles or fish and and they just don't fit into some of the smaller tanks. And so having an appropriate size water dish or a small skull, things like that, a small plant people are asking for. And so we were obviously, I don't, I don't make all that at home. I do have a 3d printer, which we can make some of the skulls and all that and some resin. Um, but I can't make all the fake plants and all of that. And so we're looking at manufacturers and distributors and to work with and, we hopefully in yeah. the next few, actually pretty soon, relatively soon, we should have some more stuff up on the website. That's cool. Yeah, you sent me some uh, some little tiny skulls. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those. Like I, I yeah. got them all set up in enclosures. They look very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we just want to say thanks for the skulls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> like those. <laughs> Skull game. So you you got the uh, arboreal enclosure that's coming out soon. Um, I know people are excited for that. Uh, because that was another comment I saw a lot on the video. Where people mm-hmm. like, well, can will this work for our boreals? So you've you've got that coming out. Um, yeah, yeah. So that we are. Uh, so we made a prototype, and this what well, we completely made a, a prototype from scratch, and we drew it out, and we uh, adjusted the ventilation. Talked to some people. I talked to some people at the Tarantula Takeover actually, who only keep our boreals, and and kind of got their input. And we figured out a design, which should be coming out in about probably the end of November, beginning of December. Things with COVID kind of slow things down sometimes, but hopefully as long as everything stays on track, it should be out then. We'll be coming out with uh, the three main sizes. It's kind of analogous to the terrestrial. So we're going to have like one that is six inches tall for the smaller tarantulas and then one that's eight and then one that's 12 and then we're gonna eventually come out with one that is um 20 inches tall for like the big pokies and all that so that should be pretty wow. cool uh yeah. again we'll run into i know we'll run into shipping issues with it yeah but yeah it is what it is well, even when that's just 12 inches tall i mean that's that's hitting like 80 percent of our boreals right yeah. there you know yeah what I mean? like that's that's a good so, size enclosure yeah I'm uh, so you're saying it'll should be out in time for christmas then right <laughs> yeah, hopefully. If, if everything goes yeah. as planned, it should be out. So far, we're on schedule, but yeah, fingers crossed. So, right, as of now, we have just the one. We have the prototype we made, and I don't, I haven't housed anything in it. I do have a P Metallica that I got from Fear Not that I was going to put in it in the prototype, but I decided not to put anything just in case I need to take pictures and do all that for the website. So you guys, you just mentioned your website. Um, that's tarantulacribs.com. And from there they can, or people can order enclosure. Like what all do you have available there? Yeah. So we enclosures primarily, but we're also putting up some of the decoration and all that. Eventually we'll, we'll hope to grow the website a little bit more and maybe get some shirts. We've had some t-shirt requests. Um, so I need to, work on that hopefully that'll be coming out soon um you have like a cleaning cloth you just put up yeah fingerprint yeah yeah because acrylic does you know one of the properties of acrylic is it it does scratch and it does blemish pretty easily 
there's not too much we can do about that, um, especially the higher quality the acrylic gets actually because the more smooth the surface is, the easier it'll scratch. So we are, we're going to get some, uh, we're going to work with some of the cleaning solution manufacturers to get some cleaning solution on there and then the microfiber cloth just to yeah. take care of the acrylic. Um, and then also any decorations. So plants, I'm going to, we're going to be getting some plants to go in the arboreal enclosures that are a little bit taller. And then some more skulls had a lot of requests for skulls. So we're getting some like watering dishes. Too. Yeah. And then some water dishes and hides and all that. Yeah. That's so a, good idea. a few different skulls coming. Yeah. A few different types of skulls. So we kind of just want to get the whole package for, for uh, tarantulas, you know, and I, I don't really have any plans to expand to any other animals or anything like that. I just want to stick with tarantulas. I mean, the tarantula hobby is, is growing exponentially right now. Yeah. So I feel like you're kind of getting in on the ground floor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and yeah. just spitballing here, but I feel like, you know, if you're going to be adding more skulls to uh, your your uh, availability, you really need to get a tarantula collective skull yeah. <laughs> to design something. That would be neat. <laughs> we definitely should. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> Are you guys doing anything special for Halloween? You got anything, like any kind of... Yeah, well, we'll take the kids out. I think we'll, with COVID and all that, there's, I think the city kind of mandates or restricts some of it with some of the subdivisions, but... We're going to do like a, a trunk or treat or something like that yeah. with our friends. Um, but nothing too much. I know my oldest son really likes Hall Halloween, actually. <laughs> I took him to the yeah. Halloween store and he was like all into like the really scary costumes and all that. So Very actually cool. my first job ever was that I worked in a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the darkness. Really? House, which it pretty, was this pretty scary? It, it's actually, I, I think it's rated one of the best in the country. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty good. That's awesome. It was a good first job. Yeah. I would imagine. We, uh, we go all out here at my house with decorations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got like little animatronic uh, grave, oh. or what do they call them? The grave keeper or something like that. Uh, yeah. That's not it. I can't even remember. Yeah. It's like a Grim Reaper skeleton yeah. guy that welcomes you to the, It's like an all graveyard theme with spiders and nice. spider webs and all that kind nice. of stuff. I did a video on it last year and um, I was going to shoot one because we got all the decorations i was going to do it this weekend but it's just been cold and rainy so i'm like yeah. I gotta wait for a good weather day to do it um <laughs> and I, I did a video unboxing some of your all's enclosures that you sent me oh. and i think I, I even made another video that where i was talking about them but i'm worried like after we're done with this podcast i gotta rehouse some tarantulas and i'm gonna be rehousing them in some more tarantula cribs enclosures Sweet. Um, and I think that's going to be like my Halloween themed episode that'll be coming out <laughs> on Halloween. So everybody, be sure to check that yeah. out because you sent me one of the one of the big ones. So I'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to yeah. And I'm yeah, I mean, debating who to put in there. Like that's the hard. <laughs> that's what's holding me up right now. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. Trying we to love decide Halloween. who gets so the we'll, nice one. We'll, uh, we'll probably have a sale or something for Halloween, so you guys can check it out. Oh yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you're all pretty active on Instagram. You, you mentioned you got like 3,000 subscribers. Um, yeah, almost. So I, you know, we've slowed down over the last few days as I'm trying to get caught up on orders. But we, before we just got a, I just got a new camera, and so I'm trying to learn that, I'm trying to take a page out of your book. But before that, all our pictures were just iPhones. So it was, uh, yeah. it was pretty good. I mean, we, we have about, uh, we're almost at 3,000. Hopefully, we'll get there by the end of the month. And do another giveaway yeah. at 3,000. What, what kind of camera did you get, just out of curiosity? <laughs> um, I got uh, one of the Sony mirrorless cameras. I can't remember nice. the exact. Yeah. Exact Sony camera. makes, they make some good cameras, yeah. man. Uh, you'll get some awesome pictures there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, got to learn so it. So we, we got, yeah, that's the hardest part, the learning curve on using cameras. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, I mean, it, it, there's so many things you can do with them. It's, it's overwhelming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've learned the best way is just do it. Just jump in feet first yeah. and learn yeah, as you go. For sure. So you, you got your you got your website, you got your Instagram. Um are you guys on Facebook at all? Well, we do have Facebook. I think Instagram is let, linked to Facebook. We don't check it as much. We'll be better about that, but uh mostly just mostly Instagram. If the easiest way to reach us by far is just getting on Instagram and we'll reply to your message there for sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if, if people wanted to reach out to you guys. Uh, what yeah. would be the best way to yeah, do that? Instagram. So hit you up on Instagram. Yeah. Very cool. So I, I'm, I'm going to be setting up. Uh, I was thinking about putting a Theraphos Astermi, or I'm sorry, a Blondie in mm. that large enclosure because I got mm. one that needs a, 
Uh, have you had anyone that's done any bioactive setups in your enclosures yet? Uh, I haven't had any feedback on a bioactive. I mean, I, I have a, uh, I mean, I have a bioactive with the millipedes and isopods and all that, and it's actually they're doing pretty well in there. I haven't had any tarantulas in a bioactive yet. I was hesitant about doing it until I saw Russ from Aquarimax Pets. I saw his video where he was keeping isopods in there, and they seemed to be thriving. And I was like, well, yeah. there's enough air circulation, and I don't know. I, I just I felt like I could think that what I was the most worried about would be um, the lighting because uh, I, I didn't. I just wasn't sure how acrylic responded to having light like it wouldn't be on sitting on it but it would be under a, a light a uv type of light mm-hmm. um this wasn't sure because like i said I'm, I'm not the smartest guy out there but i didn't know if it was like it would block uv light if the plants would be able to grow in there well um i, I don't I think it'll exactly block it but i do think with all acrylic any exposure to sunlight or uv light i guess would there's the risk of it yellowing and the better quality acrylic you use, the less likely that is to happen. And I hope and I think that it'll there's a less chance of it yellowing because we do we do actively try and get the better quality acrylic. But again, in time, who knows? Well, you know, over time yeah. acrylic will yellow. And if it takes in moisture, it will warp eventually. It's just a question of yeah. how long or it's a question of what kind of acrylic you use. So I mean it, the good thing is with isopods, you know, if it warps a little bit, it's probably not going to do that much damage. But I do have my my uh, isopods. I have dairy cows and millipede. Millipedes, I think it's like the Texas giant millipede or something, um, set up in a bioactive. And so far, so good. I haven't had any issues, and they seem to be doing well. Cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to try it out. So it'll be like an experiment. I'll let you know how it goes. And Yeah. I mean, I, I don't foresee any problems, but I just wanted to run that by you in just in case it was like some huge danger. And you're like, ah, eh, it's not a good idea. No, uh, no. But it, I just, I think it, I think it'll, it'll be cool. Cause it's, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be very bright lights or hot. It's just an LED light, you know? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. They don't, they, they needed a little bit of moisture, but it's not like super swampy or anything either. So yeah. it should be, I'm excited. I, I'll just say that. I look yeah. forward to, to setting it up. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll be doing that probably towards the end of the month which is well, quickly yeah. approaching. Man, I can't Wanna believe how late it's getting already. Uh, one last question, because I know you guys got to go. We got to wrap this up. Um, but uh, what what is your favorite uh, genus or species of tarantula that you have in your collection right now? Like, what, what are you most stoked to, to keep? What do you show off to people when they come by? Uh, so I think the chromatopelma sand pubescens is my favorite. I, I've said it before. If I could keep one tarantula, it would be that, the green bottle blue. I mean, it's feeding response. Our son really likes it too. He's four and he comes up yeah. and asks to see the green bottle blue. <laughs> um, feeding <laughs> response, the colors, the webbing. I think it's the good all around tarantula. And so we have that in one of our like engraved cases and all that. So it says chromatopelma cyanopubescens over the top. And right underneath that, he has this pretty extensive webbing. So it looks pretty cool. That is awesome. I like that. You should post a picture of that on, on Instagram. Yeah this week so people can see it when they hear the podcast they'll be like i want to see that yeah what about you alina do you have do you have a favorite Mm, i think i like the pumpkin patch i like him oh yeah 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 i like the orange that's a cool orange and black looks really nice the kids really like that one too yeah yeah Um, he just molded out male yeah so his colors are really vibrant right now they look really pretty yeah 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 that's definitely that's awesome he's a good eater too Put in a cricket, he'll chase it down. Yeah. Speaking of which, I, I was I actually got the the Florida bark scorpions from Fear Not that you sent over there. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, I was feeding them this morning, and they're still you know they're still pretty small, so I was putting in uh, lightless fruit flies, and and they were just chasing them right down, like actually chasing them down. It was pretty cool. To yeah, watch. I saw you posted a picture of that on um, Instagram, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, <laughs> earlier today. It was That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, they're doing well. Yeah, they're they're voracious eaters. I actually, uh, you can't see it on the camera, but like right off, where is the camera? Like right off over here is my communal. So like uh, while I'm talking to you guys, you might sometimes see me like freaking out looking over here. My, the scorpions have just been crawling around doing some crazy things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looked yeah. like, it, look, it, was, it was like scratch, trying to scratch its tail or something <laughs> like that. So I'm like, what in the world is this thing doing? <laughs> it was It was weird looking, but 
Yeah, they're they're fascinating. Like yeah. I just recently, the past few years, really started getting into scorpions, and yeah. I'd always just been hesitant because they I'd had a few in the past, and I just never really saw them much, and thought they were boring. Yeah, but uh, like yeah. now I've got, got a lot of different species. I'm I'm pretty fascinated by them, and yeah. I think the Florida bark scorpion is probably up there with my favorites. So yeah, you're nice. gonna enjoy watching that guy grow. Yeah, our youngest son really likes the scorpions. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. How many yeah. did you get? Did you just uh, get one or did you get I multiple? I got three. I got three. Three of each. Three of them? Yeah. Are you going to try and keep them communally when they get larger? Or are you going to yeah. keep them separate? When they, get, when they get larger, we can try it out. I don't want to risk them eating each other right now. But, right? Yeah. yeah. We'll, see. we'll see what happens. Uh, right now, they're all on their own little enclosures. Yeah, that other one. Yeah. yeah. What's that one called? Yeah, oh, the, the Panidus uh, Cavamanus. I can't even remember nice. the, the common name. It's the Latin name. Oh, I think that one is the uh, the red cave scorpion or yeah, something yeah, like that. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's what I we don't have. have that one. I actually I just last Tuesday did a video on um, the Emperor Scorpion and was talking about yeah. uh-huh. the red the red claw scorpion. And that's uh, and I can't remember its scientific name right now, but when I was talking about, like, I recorded myself talking, but instead of saying red cave, red claw the entire time, I kept saying red cave. <laughs> and then, like, I had to go back, like, wow, those are two different species. Freaking common yeah. names drive me crazy sometimes. <laughs> but So, um, everybody, go check out uh, Tarantula Cribs' website, tarantulacribs.com. Check out their, uh, their Instagram if you just want to see what they got going on in their collection and uh, some cool products you guys have coming out here in the near future. I really appreciate you guys being willing to do the podcast because one reason I wanted to get you on here is just I think it's awesome that there's finally somebody out there making tarantula enclosures that actually keeps tarantulas. Like I think that is a huge plus and that's something that, you know, a lot of people don't think about when they're, I mean, when you just look at the market, you see a lot of people selling tarantula enclosures that obviously don't keep them because <laughs> there's some like some, mm-hmm. some huge issues with those enclosures. And I think you guys are <laughs> putting out a very high quality product that is just, it's amazing. It's some, some great stuff. And I recommend you to anybody that I've talked to that's like, what kind of enclosure should I get? I'm like, you got to get a tarantula cribs one. Cause you know, if you want to yeah. get the best, that that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Thank applause you so much. to you guys. I Thank think I've got so an applause much. button. Is this it? <laughs> is that making, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys yeah. are awesome. And Thank I wish you. you all the luck in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. It was awesome to get to meet you guys. Like we've talked yeah. uh, through Instagram and stuff like uh-huh. that, but you guys are much better looking than what I had envisioned <laughs> in my head. <laughs> like, you turn on the screen. I was like, those are beautiful people. <laughs> I don't know what I had in my mind, but <laughs> I think I thought you all just looked like me, like <laughs> some <No. laughs> middle-aged uh, bald people. But yeah, you guys, you guys are awesome. It was, it was really cool getting to talk to you and meet you and, Thank you again. Thank you so much for doing Likewise, this. Likewise. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, I mean, we're open to ideas or anything else. And, you know, we just want to make good enclosures for the tarantulas and have people put them on display. That's what we like to see. Post your pictures up. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. It was a, a pleasure. Yeah, I'm sure we will be talking again very yeah. soon in the future. And good luck with everything. Uh, everybody go check out their website if you want to get some of the best enclosures that are available for your tarantulas. you got to go with Tarantula Cribs. You can check out my YouTube video that I did uh, unboxing and showcasing some of theirs. You can also check out Aquarimax Pets, Tarantula Cat. She did a video on them as well, didn't mm-hmm. she? I, yeah. I believe I saw that. Um, Alex at Tarantula Haven. Like A lot of people are using them. A lot of people are really liking them. So uh, I highly suggest you check that out. Uh, thanks again for listening to the podcast. Uh, it's always cool having you guys. Uh, you know, it, it's just awesome that you're downloading these and listening to them. Uh, if you're checking it out on YouTube, uh, go into the description. You'll I'll have links for uh, Tarantula Cribs website and Instagram there as well. Be sure to listen to the Exotic Pet Collective every Thursday, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, pretty much anywhere you listen to uh, to your podcast. You can find us. All right, thank you. We'll see you next week.